Space has inspired man ever since the beginning of time. We have always wanted to discover, explore, and bring back research to try and answer the questions of where we came from, why we are here, and what does the future hold. Man has always looked at the moon as the first step in answering these questions, and in the 1960s, President Kennedy decided to take us there. Although he died in 1962, President Kennedy's dream still carried on with the Gemini missions and then the Apollo program. The first Apollo mission was supposed to be that first step to the moon. Apollo 1 was not a step towards the moon though, it was a step backwards. The three astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee died in a fire during pre-flight. Despite the loss of Apollo 1, man did go to the moon. A little over two years and ten missions later, Apollo 11 landed on the moon. The success was enough to say that NASA had recovered from Apollo 1. But, after Apollo 12, the American public viewed space travel as something that was a routine operation. It was likely that they had lost interest in space. Some even believed that the Apollo program was now a waste of money, because America had already beaten the Russians to the moon. Apollo 13 changed the way people thought of space travel, and the purpose of space travel. To land on the moon, all of the Apollo missions had to have a powerful rocket to get them there. They also needed a spacecraft that was specially designed to land on the moon and then return home. The rocket getting the men to the moon was the Saturn V rocket. It was a multi-stage rocket designed by Warner Von Braun to take the men out of Earth's gravitational force. Once out in space, the crew would then hard dock the two moon landing spacecrafts command and lunar modules. The command module was the spacecraft designed to get the men to the moon. The lunar module was designed to land on it. The other part of the spacecraft was called the service module. The service module held the main engine that was used to propel the astronauts to the moon and then back home. The command module would dock with the lunar module and basically carry it to the moon. Once the two spacecraft reached the moon, the lunar module would release from the command module and start its descent towards the moon. When exploration was finished, the lunar module would lift off, dock with the command module, and then make the journey home. Told this way, the procedure seems fairly easy, but it is not. Astronauts had to train for months to be able to perform these tasks. Most of the training was done in simulators, that resemble the spacecraft's controls. The simulators would create problems with the spacecraft during the regular mission schedule and the crew would have to react. The simulators taught the astronauts how to react and fix a problem. The astronauts of Apollo 13, Jim Lovell, Fred Hayes, and Ken Mattingly trained in these kind of simulators. Also, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes trained for the lunar landing and the experiments that would take place on the moon for research. Jim Lovell, the Apollo 13 commander, was chosen among eight others such as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin to fly the Gemini program. The Gemini program was designed to gather research on how to get to the moon. Lovell flew two missions, Gemini 7 and then Gemini 12, the last of the Gemini missions. He was then assigned to the Apollo program. After the Apollo 1 accident, he was assigned to be the command module pilot of Apollo 8. Fred Hayes, the lunar module pilot, was the first of the 1966 group of pilots to be assigned duties of Apollo missions as part of the backup crew for Apollo 8 and Apollo 11. Hayes was then placed on the crew of Apollo 13. Unfortunately, the command module pilot Ken Mattingly was taken out of the crew because he was exposed to Charlie Duke, who had contracted the measles. Uh, then about a week or ten days before the flight, I caught the measles and exposed everybody to the measles. And uh, so Mattingly was taken off that flight, and the guy I had trained with, Jack Swigert, took his place. Swigert trained hard with the crew so that the astronauts would be ready to go to the moon. Apollo 13 took off at 2.13 p.m. It lifted off from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The Saturn V rocket went into Earth orbit and separated from the command module three hours after launch. Jack Swiger then successfully docked the command module with the lunar module. About two days after launch, there was an explosion. Well, I was recovering. I was basically well, but I was home 
uh, in, uh, if I remember, it's about 10 o'clock at night, Houston time, and the phone rang, and uh, I forgot who called, but somebody in Mission Control called and said, uh, hey, we got a real, uh, we got a real problem. Uh, and he explained that we had an oxygen failure, an explosion, uh, can you guys come in? And un unlike the movie on Apollo 13, John Young and Mattingly and I were probably there within 30, 40 minutes after the accident. When I got to Mission Control and I looked at the uh, at the situation, and the and the and after 10 hours or so of looking at the uses of oxygen and electrical power on a lunar module, I, it says uh, I was very pessimistic. We're not going to make it. We're going to run out of something, electrical power, or uh, oxygen, or something. Because of the explosion, Apollo 13 would not be able to go to the moon. Mission Control tried to fix the problem by shutting down one of the fuel cells. This did not fix it, however, and now one of the fuel cells was lost. Therefore, the three astronauts had to climb into the lunar module for the journey home. The limb, as it was called, would have to support three men for 90 hours, but it was only meant to support two men for 45 hours. The entire spacecraft had to be powered down. This was done to conserve the batteries and oxygen on the command module for re-entry. Since the spacecraft was now powered down, the temperature dropped dramatically. The astronauts had to endure temperatures of near freezing conditions. The descent engine on the lunar module that was made to land on the moon had now become the main engine. The astronauts had to take a free trajectory course. This meant that they would have to slingshot themselves around the moon using the moon's gravity then they would have to make a burn with the lunar module engine to propel themselves away from the moon and then towards Earth. Another problem was that since the lunar module was only meant to sustain two men for two days, the lithium hydroxide filters on the lunar module could not support the men for four days. The command module had extras of these lithium hydroxide filters, but they did not fit the lunar module's receptacle. Men back at Mission Control began building a filter using only spare parts that the astronauts had on the ship. Um, That's right. To go in, uh, the, the, the duty of the backup crew during the flight was to be in Mission Control during some of the critical events of the mission uh, so that we could give advice uh, from a uh, crew standpoint uh, to the flight director and the other engineers in, uh, in Mission Control. Uh, and so they depended on us a lot, especially when uh, we had uh, 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 critical emergencies. But uh, uh, as we circled, as we developed the procedures, we kept working. As we came around the moon and started back, uh, we got smarter in, in controlling usage of electrical power and oxygen. And then my attitude changed from well, if we don't foul up here on Earth and in Mission Control and they don't foul up on board, we're going to make it. We're not going to run out of something. Mm -hmm. And so we did. And so we got very optimistic in Mission Control uh, after uh, we start, uh, went around the moon and started home, which was, if I remember, about 30 hours after the accident. After the Odyssey entered the atmosphere, there was, as normal, a loss of communication. Everyone in Mission Control held their breath while they waited to hear for the Odyssey to respond. Mission Control exploded with excitement when not the Odyssey responded back. The parachutes had opened and Apollo 13 had made it safely back to Earth. Suddenly, the story was an even bigger hit for the presses. The mission that was once ignored as a routine flight was now a nationwide story of tragedy and triumph. People then understood the importance of the Apollo missions and how dangerous an astronaut's job really was. The lessons learned from the Apollo 13 accident made NASA take precautions to keep the same thing from happening again. Also, the Apollo 13 crisis sent a message to the people and they found out how hard an astronaut's job really was. After Apollo 13, NASA did not lose any astronauts in space until the Space Shuttle Challenger exploded. Following that tragedy, the Space Shuttle Columbia exploded while entering Earth's atmosphere. The astronauts of Apollo 13 would not have made it back if it was not for the men on the ground that worked together to rescue the three astronauts against all odds. Out of all this, the men, women, and astronauts of NASA have triumphed over all tragedies and continue the exploration of space today. <laughs>